Welcome back, this is the Nitrid Berg, and in this lecture we'll be going over router identity and IP neighbors. Now, what is router identity? Router identity is a way to quickly customize the identity or name of the router so that it can appear in the IP neighbors list or it can appear in um, your session when you're connecting to the device so that you know which device you're actually working on. If all of the devices are just called Microtik, it might get very confusing which device you're actually administrating. So router identity allows us a way of basically naming our devices so that we don't ever get lost. And IP neighbors, on the other hand, is a cool tool that Microtik provides to us that you can actually connect to devices or see devices or learn their information to see what they are. And it's going to be super useful. So we're going to see all of this in a lab using EVNG, using virtual routers. And we're going to get into that now. Alrighty, I've just switched my screen to my EVNG canvas and I'm just going to start up these routers. And as you can see, I've called all of these routers R1, R2, R3, which is names for me that I know. But if I actually connect to the devices, then you'll see the predicament we have if, if all of the devices are just called Microtik. So let me open up my Winbox session. Let me just drag in here. And these devices should be booted up. So there's going to be three Microtiks in my neighbors. So if I go here, I can see the one so long. Uh, the other two haven't started up yet. Let me just refresh. There we go. So all three of the Microtics are there. And I kind of already know which one is which, but that's because of a me working on E for a while thing. But I see all of them is just called Microtik. They've all got the same version. So I, if I was managing these three routers and I didn't give them custom names, I might be lost. And this is where router identity comes into play. So we can actually just connect onto these Microtics. So I'll just log in admin and blank. These are pretty barren routers at the moment. And in the session as well, you'll see at the top left, it says Microtik. And if I open up a terminal window, it will also just say Microtik. So very, very standard. So let's fix that by setting a custom name. So I'll just go into my system. I'll go to identity and then I'll change the identity to whatever I want. So in this case, I'll make it R1. I'll click apply. I'll hit OK. And immediately on the session itself, you'll see that's already updated to R1. And if I hit the enter key in terminal, the name's also updated in my terminal. So if I'm connected on command line, I'll also see that change. So I know which router I'm actually working on. Let's just quickly do the same for the other two routers. And for them, I might just quickly do it through the command line because that's really quick and easy to do. So I'll just go admin blank, no system identity set name r2 and i'll do the same for the r3 one so i'm connecting quickly admin blank no <laughs> and let's just do system identity no not upgrade system identity set name r3 there we go now each router has a unique identity unique name so now if i go into uh, winbox again let me just close my session so i'll just disconnect and if I refresh you'll actually see the identity on Winbox is also updated so now it's a lot easier for me to know which router I'm working on so that concludes router identity let's get into IP neighbors all right so to better explain IP neighbors it's best that I just show you in Winbox what it's doing so even here if I go to this neighbors tab this is actually IP neighbors working um, but let me go into the microtech and if I just maximize this Winbox session quickly, if I go to IP and go to the neighbors menu, you'll actually see it's learning different information about devices connected or that it can see across the network, which is really cool. Um, you can see stuff like which interface the device is being learned from. You could see what IP address is assigned on that interface for that device really useful. You can see what that device's MAC address is, what their identity is, uh, what platform it is, is Microtik. Because the nice thing is if we go into this discovery settings, you'll actually see it's participating in MNDP, which is the Microtik discovery protocol, but it's also got CDP and LLDP. So CDP is more or less Cisco proprietary, but you can see Cisco devices with this, or there's the LLDP, which is pretty much industry standard. It runs on most switches and routers so that you could use that to actually get information. And this is useful information to have, especially if you maybe see 
a, a router is having a certain amount of uptime, it's only been up for eight minutes. And then you can safely assume maybe the router was restarted or there was a power issue or something. Um, another nice thing about this IP neighbor section is if I right click any of these line items, you can actually do a Mac ping to see if the layer two is up. So if I do Mac ping and I get a response and I know this microtech can actually connect to the other microtech over layer two, which is really nice. And the really cool thing is, and why I love this stuff is if I right click and I do a Mac telnet, I can actually log on to the remote microtech using command line and I can administer it this way. I can manage it this way. And this is crazy because I don't know if you've ever ran into a situation where you've done configuration on a router and you get locked out and now it either requires somebody to do a physical reboot of the equipment or you need to go out to site to actually fix the issue. With Microtech, it's got this additional way of connecting to a remote site using the MAC address and then you can actually fix whatever issues you, you potentially uh, caused via the layer two. So this is really, really nice. I just wanna show you something else with the discovery settings. So besides the different protocols we have here, you can see there's this interface. So this is set for which interfaces you want to learn or participate in the discovery. Now we can leave it on all or static or dynamic or none. And this will basically do whatever these uh, information headers tell you, but you can also create an interface list and reference that um, on the discovery settings. So I just quickly wanna do that to show you if you wanna stop people from seeing your um, microtech devices, you could potentially create an interface list so that you can manage where you're learning the neighbors from. So let's just create an interface list. So I'm gonna to go to my interface lists, create a new list, just give it a name. I'll call this neighbors, I'll add the list, and then I'll just quickly hit the plus and then what I'm going to do first is I'm going to add Ether1 to this list and apply it. Then I'm going to back, go back to my IP neighbors. I'm going to go into my discovery settings. And I'm going to select neighbors, the interface list that I just created. If I apply that, I'm going to have some issues because now the neighbors vanished. The reason being is I'm only allowing ether one to participate in this discovery protocols. So let's just change that by going back in and then I'll just add ether four to that interface because that is the interface. If I go to my Eve uh, setup, that's connecting to this network. All right. So I've added ether four again. And if I go back to my neighbors, all of this back. Awesome. So now you can see what IP neighbors does as well as how router identity works. I hope you enjoyed the, Lecture and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.